Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Dr. John Minarsik from the United States, and right now I'm in the warmest part of the United States called Puerto Rico, which is why my face looks kind of bright, because I'm facing the sunlight to the east here. If you're wondering why I don't have any, uh, here we go, books in my bookcase, it's because I carry around this little uh, keychain micro SD chip, which has more pathology and uh, medical school textbooks on something the size of my fingernail than there are in uh, an entire medical school library. I'm very glad that Dr. Johnson asked me to speak to Patho India today because I have been, uh, I had something that's been bothering me lately and I really want to get it off of my chest. I think we could start out by saying uh, I've been carrying around a uh, piece of paper now for about a month and every day I look at it and I say is it possible is it possible and here's the piece of paper I keep it on my a clip pad so when I go into my lecture and webinar rooms I kind of look at it and say yes this is possible this is what I call my five no paper it says no tuition no grades no exams no requirements for admission and no flunk outs. This is my uh, ideal uh, medical school. It's called the Five No Medical School. And uh, let me give you a little background to it. Uh, so I'm going to erase uh, my manatee over here. And I might keep my picture on for a while. And I want to show you just uh, about 15 PowerPoints that I made for this presentation. It's called Looking for a Few Good Men. And to me, few means about five. That's about a right number for a few. Now, uh, when a child is born in the United States and they dream to be a doctor, that means that they dream to practice medicine. And in order to practice medicine, they need a medical license. And in order to get a medical license, they have to take the medical license exam. And according uh, to what I think, in order to take the medical licensing exam, they have to be allowed to take the medical licensing exam. And the only entities which can allow them to take the medical licensing exam are called medical schools. There's about, oh, 105 of them under the control of the LCME. So, what they soon realize when they get a little bit older is that their dream to uh, become a doctor could be dashed uh, into the rocks because they learn that they have to go bankrupt in order to fulfill their dreams because medical schools now cost anywhere from oh, about thirty-five to $60,000. Now, I've been uh, involved with online education for a long time. I started out with shotgun histology and it went very well. So I did a lot of histopathology uh, YouTube movies. And then I decided to make a whole bunch of movies on medical school uh, pathology. Whoops. I wanted to correct that little typo over there. So let's do it. Try it again. Whoops. I screwed it up again. Whoa. Maybe I should uh, not uh, try typing anymore. There we go. Uh, and then I decided to give webinars uh, every year for about five years. Uh, this is my fifth year. And uh, this is my second year of not only giving the live webinars to 105 countries, but I do it from a real medical school. So I have synchronized webinars. And what I've been bugged about lately is that I'm thinking, why can't we reduce the tuition of a uh, classroom? medical school to zero dollars rather than sixty thousand dollars a year now the first thing i realized when i came to this really nice medical school in puerto rico is that after a few days all of my students which i call iguanas disappeared on me and they metamorphosized into buzzards which is what i call my online students and because they disappeared to me, I thought, wow, I must suck. I'm probably a bad professor. And I realized they were all going online. 
rather than sitting in the auditorium. So what that has told me is that I have about 102 reasons here why the classroom uh, online is vastly superior to auditorium medical school classes. I'm going to let you see each one for about 10 seconds. Maybe you'll get a chuckle out of some of these. And you can see I put my big red stamp on each one. And there's the second one. And I'm going to show you the third one. I'll give you a few more seconds to read it. Okay. Anyway, I could probably dream up about 500, but these are just the top uh, 102. There's the third batch. Here's the fourth batch. I guess you could always go back and read these uh, later on if you want, but I think you're getting the uh, idea. And the idea is this. It's not just convenience. It's better hearing and better seeing. There's no reason to have walled medical school classrooms anymore. I call them jail boxes. Now here's a guy by the name of Hippocrates. And what he uh, does is he listens to us while we put on our white coats at all the American medical schools. We take his oath. Now, part of that oath is where you say, I vow to freely share my knowledge. Okay, well, that's what the Hippocratic Oath is about, although a lot of people seem to uh, forget it. So my question is, if all physicians are bound not by uh, capitalism, of course, they might be tied to it, but they're not bound to it. They are bound by their Hippocratic oath to freely share their knowledge. If that's the case, then why do medical students have to go bankrupt routinely in order to fulfill their altruistic dreams? And here's another thing, too. I did a little study, because I've been around to a lot of medical schools, a lot, and uh, what I've noticed is that a very tiny fraction of student tuition goes to professors. In one place, which I walked out on, by the way, it was as low as 5%, okay? Here's another thing to remember, is that for those of you who know about the step one or the USMLE exam, over 90% of the material on it can be learned in a classroom. You don't have to be in a clinic, okay? So. 90% or more of what you need to know to pass the Step 1 USMLE exam can be learned better online than in an expensive classroom. Well, the reason why it's so expensive and the reason why students' dreams are dashed is because there is this uh, entity which I call the axis of evil. It is a um, bastardized relationship between the U.S. LCME, which is not part of the AMA. It is really a government institution, which tells the medical students what they have to do in order to grant them the monopoly to be the only ones to let people take the U.S. MLE exam. Uh, and this winds up in being a very, very expensive operation. This building itself is many, many millions of dollars. And it could be from a, the back of a, uh, it could be uh, from a closet that has a PC and an internet connection. So the way to bypass bankrupting medical students is to bypass the axis of evil. Okay, now, Here's a couple of thoughts. I call this my final thought, but it's my pen ultimate or second or third from the last thought. If there's about, um, oh, I just checked. There's 7.046 billion people on planet Earth today. And let me ask you something. Do you think that maybe one of them might be smart enough to cure cancer? If you agree that, yes, maybe there is one at least, or 10. Uh, Here's the next question. What are the probabilities that his family can afford to send him to a medical school? I'm saying American medical school. I know in some countries are state supported. So I really personally blame the uh, lack of progress in true uh, medical uh, research because of the axis of evil. Okay. 
I'm going to show you a couple more slides because I think my seven minutes is running out. Uh, I'm looking for a few good men. That's the uh, title to this thing, so I might as well explain it in very, very tiny print here, which you might not be able to see. Of course, if you have a computer, you might be able to see it. But if you were in a classroom, you would never be able to see it. I'm looking for a really good physio professor in anatomy, farm, biochem, and micro. Like me, if you think that there's one student out of seven billion who could cure cancer, maybe there's five that, like me, uh, can volunteer their services, and they're not quite old enough to be quite senile yet, like me, and are really good at teaching uh, what they've always loved to do. If I could find five of those guys, we could get together. We could have a, uh, a really superior medical school, and we could produce candidates for the USMLE, which will be better than those poor people that have to pay up to $60,000 a year. I believe this is my last slide, and it is uh, an actual scan of what I've been carrying around. It might sound uh, pretty revolutionary, but... You know, school sucks, tuition sucks, grade sucks, exam sucks, requirement admissions suck, flunking out sucks. Well, medical schools don't really flunk out, but they charge more tuition than students can. And they are obsessed, more obsessed with giving tests and grades than they are with teaching. Every medical school I've been to has more top-heavy people involved in the evaluation process rather than the teaching medicine process. And I do believe that uh, when we prepare our students online for the boards, they may pass or fail, but at least we give them our best shot, and we are not making any requirements for admission either. Uh, and we don't care whether there's five people listening to us or 5,000. So think about it. Uh, if you know uh, of these five people, uh, please let me know. Maybe one of them is yourself. Uh, like the U.S. Marines, uh, I'm looking for a few good men, and uh, let's uh, revolutionize, revolutionize the world. Hurry up, I'm getting kind of old, so who knows? I just may fade out just like you see me fading out over there. Thank you very much, and uh, once again, thank uh, Dr. Johnson from Patho, India, for asking me to give this. Bye-bye.